I'm just about to start my workout for today. All I'm using today is my jump rope and my sandbag, which is filled with about 25 pounds of sand. That's a good weight for me. You may need to use something lighter or heavier that's going to depend on your strength and on your level of fitness, what you have available to you and how hard you're looking to push yourself today. So please consider all of those factors when choosing your weight and make the decision that is best for you. This workout is going to take exactly 30 minutes. This is kind of a new format. I don't know that I've ever done this specific format before, but we are on intervals of two minutes. There's no rest interval, so I have my timer set for just one interval of two minutes times 15 rounds. So 15 rounds times two minutes is 30 minutes. And we are going to be doing eight different sandbag exercises and in between each of those exercises, we're going to be jumping rope. So I'll start with my first sandbag exercise. We'll do that for two minutes. And then as soon as the timer beeps, there's no designated rest interval. We're going to get right into our first two minute jump rope segment. Obviously you will lose a few seconds off of that work interval while you set your sandbag down and grab your jump rope. The point is just to move directly into the jump rope section as quickly as you can. So there's not a designated rest interval. Um, so you'll want to just move as quickly as you can. Obviously, if you need to rest, rest, okay? Work at your own pace, but that's the format. So um, it's actually seven different sandbag exercises, but one of them we have to do on both sides. So um, let me go ahead and show you the exercises so that you know what we're doing and you can do this workout right along with me. I'm starting with sandbag swings. This is a very basic exercise and I think most people are familiar with kettlebell swings. So if you don't have a sandbag, obviously you can use a kettlebell for this or a heavy dumbbell. You can even look for household items that will work. So you might be able to make something similar to a sandbag by using a duffel bag filled with some sort of weight. Um, dog food or uh, bags of rice or beans or something like that, for example. Um, you also might be able to hold on to something like a jug of laundry detergent, uh, similar to the way you would do this exercise with a kettlebell or maybe a gallon milk container filled with water or sand or kitty litter or something like that or rice or beans. Okay, so get creative and use what you've got as long as it's something you can maintain a secure grip on throughout the exercise and it's not too heavy for you, pretty much anything will work for weight for this exercise. So I'm just going to start holding my sandbag in one hand. You're gonna hinge up the hips. So like I always tell you, got your shoulders back and down, keep that chest lifted high, make sure your core is strong and tight and engaged the whole time. Push that booty back, pretend you're trying to touch the wall behind you with your booty. That is going to help keep your back straight and it's going to help keep the weight in your heels, which is what we want. Keep the knees soft. Do not lock out your knees like this. Make sure there's a slight bend to the knees and make sure you're hinging at the hips. Okay, so don't round your back, hinge at the hips. And then from there, all you're gonna do is just swing. You're going to uh, press your heels into the ground, hinge at the hips, come back up to your starting position as you swing your arm out in front of you and swing the sandbag. Try not to go too high with it, okay? Try to just keep it more or less at shoulder length like this. Um, if your momentum takes you, like I'm not gonna come and like measure the angle of your shoulder or anything, so you know don't stress out about it too much. But you're what you're aiming to just kind of lift it about shoulder length, okay? Or shoulder height, not length. I can't say words. I think I'm still recovering from this lap challenge, you guys. My brain is like still fried. All right, so it's I'm and then I'm just gonna switch hands at the top of the movement with each swing, okay? So I'm gonna start with the sandbag with one hand and then hinging at the hips, I'm gonna swing it between my legs and then up, and then at the top of the movement, I'm switching hands with each rep. Okay, so just swing it up, swing it back, and that is the first exercise. After 40 days of that tough slap challenge that we just finished, I really made a concerted effort to write a workout today that included zero squats zero lunges, zero reps of abs, and zero push-ups. I know you could argue that all of these exercises are ab exercises. At pretty much any exercise, if you're doing it correctly and engaging your core, could be considered an ab exercise if you're gonna cast that wide of a net. But I'm talking about like no crunches or like Russian twists or anything like that. Okay, so um, I am not going to be doing any squats, lunges, abs, or push-ups today, but 
If you don't have a sandbag or a kettlebell or something similar that you can use or you just don't want to add weight, um, instead of the sandbag swings, if you need an equipment-free modification, you really can just do any squat variation you want. So you could just do air squats or you can do any squat variation. That would be fine. Okay, so just remember with your squats, shoulders back and down, chest lifted high, strong, tight, engaged, core, push the booty back, try to touch the wall behind you with your booty, and keep your back flat and the weight in your heels. Then from this position, sink down into your squat. Press the heels into the ground to stand. So press the ground away from you and return to your standing position. That's a basic air squat. So any squat variation you wanna do um, will be totally fine if you don't have anything you can use for weight for the sandbag swings. Next is going to be glute bridge raises and I'm going to add difficulty by using my sandbag to add weight to this exercise. So I'm just going to place my sandbag here on my hips and kind of hold it in place with my hands just so it doesn't slide off. But I don't want my arms bearing any of the weight. My hands are just to keep the sandbag in place. Um, I wanna be using my glutes to lift that extra weight. Okay, so I'll show you first just a basic uh, glute bridge raise. So you're just gonna press your heels, my feet are flat on the mat, I'm just gonna press your heels into the mat and lift those hips as high as you can. And for me, I'm increasing the difficulty because I'm lifting my hips with this 25 pound bag on my hips. So it's all that extra weight that I'm lifting up. At the top of the movement, squeeze those glutes and then control the movement on the way down. So don't just drop your hips back down. You wanna control the movement on the way up, squeeze the glutes and then control the movement on the way down, okay? I'm going to be doing that but I'm going to be alternating heels and toes. So with my first rep, I'm gonna lift my toes off the mat, press the heels into the mat, lift the hips as high as I can, squeeze the glutes, control the movement on the way down. With my next rep, I'm going to lift my heels off the mat and then pressing the toes into the mat, I'm gonna do the same thing. Lift the hips as high as you can, squeeze those glutes at the top, control the movement on the way down. Okay, so you can do them with your feet flat on the floor, you can do just heels, you can do just toes, you can alternate with each rep like I'm doing. If you don't have a sandbag, um, you can do this exercise holding a kettlebell or a dumbbell here. Again, just have your hands there to keep it in place so it doesn't slide off of you, but um, you don't want to use your hands to help you, you don't want to use your arm strength, just make sure you're just using your hands to keep it steady. But you can do the same thing with a dumbbell or a kettlebell or a household item, a jug of laundry detergent a gallon milk container filled with some sort of weight. If you don't want to add weight, you can just do glute bridge raises. So you can just have your arms to the side like this for support. And you can do these with both of your feet flat on the mat the whole time. Just lift and lower the hips. You can do it with your uh, toes elevated like this. You can do it with your heels elevated, or you can alternate with each rep. Okay, you can do one leg at a time. Okay, so um, there are lots of variations of that exercise that don't include weight. So if you don't have anything that's going to work for weight, you can choose one of those. For the next exercise, I'm gonna be down here on my knees. So I am actually using my jump rope mat for this exercise because I have it out here. My jump rope mat, mat is nice and thick. So if you're just using a yoga mat, that's fine, but they're usually very thin. So it might not be a bad idea to plan on putting something else underneath it, like a towel or something, just so that you have a little bit more protection for your knees. Um, if you don't have any issues with your knees, you might not need it. We're only gonna be down here for less than like two minutes. But if you have one of those thicker exercise mats, I would say that would be a better idea than a yoga mat. If you only have a yoga mat, um, you might wanna consider putting a towel or something underneath it, okay? But I'm gonna start down here on my knees and I'm going to take my sandbag and throw it over one shoulder. And now the side that the sandbag is on, I'm going to take that knee and bring it up, step the foot forward. And then from this position, I'm going to lift the sandbag up over my head and then place it down on the opposite shoulder, okay? Then from here, I'm going to return to my starting position, so this foot is going to go back behind me, and then I'm going to bring the other knee forward, place that foot flat on the ground in front of my mat, and then repeat. I'm gonna lift the sandbag up over my head 
and place it on the opposite shoulder. Then return to the starting position, so this foot steps back, and then I'm gonna just keep going, okay? So step the foot forward, lift the sandbag, set it down the opposite shoulder, step the foot back, return to the starting position. Other side, step the foot forward, lift the bag, place it on the opposite shoulder, return to the starting position. So again, if you don't have a sandbag, this is something you really could easily do with like a duffel bag or a backpack filled with some sort of weight. You could probably also do it with a kettlebell or a dumbbell, just be safe, use your common sense. Um, don't use anything that you might drop on your head. So if you're using a kettlebell or a dumbbell, you need to be 100% confident in your ability to make that transfer up and over your head without dropping a heavy weight on your head, please. Um, if you don't have anything that's going to work for weight or you just don't want to add weight to the exercise, then obviously you're going to eliminate the entire movement of lifting something up and over your head because there's no point in doing this if you're not lifting anything. So you can do something like this instead. You can just do up downs. So you can start here on your mat in a standing position and then bring one knee down to the mat, follow with the other knee. And now that same knee, the same leg that you started on, reverse the movement, bring that foot forward and stand. Alternate legs with each rep. So now initiating the movement with the other foot, bring this knee down, the other knee follows. And now again, initiating the movement with this leg, bring the foot forward and stand. Okay, so just down, down, up, up, other side, down, down, up, up. That would be my recommendation if you need an equipment-free alternative for that exercise. All right, this next exercise is really, really tough, so do your best with it. But I'm going to be um, starting with the sandbag over my shoulder again. So I'm going to throw the sandbag over one shoulder. And now the other hand is gonna come flat on the ground in front of me. And I'm going to have my knees bent and I'm starting in this position. So my heels are lifted off the ground and my knees are bent. I'm sure there's a name for this position, but I don't know what it is right now. So that's the position you're gonna start in. The foot that is on the opposite side of the bag is going to come forward and kick through like this. Okay, so I'm going to bring this foot forward and kick through. I'm going to keep the other leg bent. Now the foot of my standing leg is flat on the floor and I'm going to reverse the movement. So now this foot that's elevated, I'm going to bend the knee, bring the foot back underneath, place it on the ground, and return to my starting position. Okay, we're going to stay on one side for the entire work interval. All right, so this is the exercise that I told you we're gonna have to do on both sides. So um, it's gonna be really, really tough staying on one side for nearly two minutes. So do your best with it, but we're gonna do it on, uh, we're gonna stay on one side for one work interval, then we'll do our jump rope interval, and then we'll switch to the other side for the next work interval. Um, so that's gonna be a total of four minutes spent on that really, really tough exercise, so do your best. If you don't have a sandbag or something similar that you can use, you can do the same exercise, holding a kettlebell or a dumbbell up by your shoulder. Um, if you need an equipment-free modification, you can start with both hands flat on the ground, and then you're just gonna do the same thing. So take one foot, lift the opposite hand, kick that foot through, and then reverse the movement, okay? And then just stay on the same side, the entire work interval. It's still a great exercise even without any added weight. All right, this next exercise is also super tough. I am doing sandbag deadlifts with a knee up, sandbag clean, and then a bent over row. It sounds like a lot, but it is a lot. We're gonna alternate legs. So here's what I'm doing. I'm gonna start holding the sandbag in front of me like this, and I'm going to do a one leg deadlift. So I'm going to take the foot of my non-standing leg, bend the knee and let that foot come behind me. Again, you want to make sure your shoulders are staying back and down. 
you want to make sure that you have a bend to the knee in that standing leg. Do not lock your knee out. Make sure there's a bend in that knee. And again, you're going to be hinging at the hips and keeping the weight in your heel, just like we did for the sandbag swings. Okay, so from there, you're going to hinge at the hips, flat back, weight in the heel, let the bag fall down in front of you. Now pressing that heel into the ground. So push the ground away, reverse the movement, hinging at the hips, engaging all of those muscles in your standing leg from the foot all the way up to the glutes, into the core. And now this knee is going to come up in front of you as you clean the sandbag. So flip the bag up and over so that you're holding it in your elbows and bring that knee up in front of you. Now you're going to go back down into your deadlift position. So this foot's going to go back behind you. Sandbag comes down and you're going to return to this deadlift position. And then from here, you're going to do a bent over row. So just bending the elbows and lifting the weight in a controlled movement up towards your shoulders and then controlling the movement on the way down. So again, you don't want to just drop the bag down. You want to control the movement and lower the bag down. Okay. Then hinging at the hips again. Push the ground away, engaging all of the muscles in that standing leg from the foot all the way up to the glutes, to the core. And that's one breath. We're going to alternate sides. So now put this foot down and you're going to do the same thing on the other leg. So deadlift. Now knee comes up as you clean the sandbag. Fight for that balance. Back down to your deadlift. Row the sandbag and return to the starting position. All right, so again, you can do that with a kettlebell or um, dumbbells, and that would be perfectly fine. If you don't have a sandbag, you don't have a kettlebell or a dumbbell or any kind of household item that will work for weight, and you need an equipment-free modification, you can just do deadlifts, okay? So it's the same exercise, and it's still a really tough exercise, and it's still great for your glutes. You're just not lifting any weight. You're not adding weight to it, so again, you can just do the deadlift without any added weight. Bend this uh, standing knee as much as you need to in order to keep that back flat. And then you can just come up, bring that knee up in front of you, put it down, switch legs. Okay, so now other leg. Deadlift, knee up. Next I'm doing an overhead press with an oblique twist. So I'm going to start holding my sandbag like this so that it is balanced on my knuckles okay and i have my sandbag in front of my chest my feet are about shoulder width apart and i'm going to just press the sandbag straight up over my head as i do that i'm going to twist to the side so i'm just twisting in this direction and as i twist i'm just rotating that foot and um, rotating it so that my toes are facing that wall over there and I'm lifting the heel. Now I'm gonna reverse the movement. So the heel comes down, the foot's gonna rotate back so that the toes are facing you again and I'm gonna lower the sandbag back down in front of my chest. Alternating sides. So now rotating the opposite foot towards that wall as I turn and face that direction. Lifting the heel, pressing the sandbag up overhead. Now, bending the shoulders, bringing the sandbag back down in front of my chest, facing front, that foot rotates towards the front and lower the heel, okay? So again, of course, you can very easily do that with a kettlebell or a heavy dumbbell or dumbbells um, or a household item like a jug of laundry detergent or even a water bottle, um, whatever you've got available to you. All right, so if you don't have anything that you can use for weight, or you just don't wanna add weight to the workout, it's kind of hard to give you an equipment-free modification because that's really just an overhead press. So if you don't have any weight to press up overhead, that's kind of the whole exercise. But here's something you can try. Um, you can do like a little side lunge combo. So um, side to side lunges. So again, with the lunges, shoulders back and down, chest is high. Strong, tight, engaged core. Push the booty back so that your back stays flat and the weight stays in the heel 
of this lunging foot, okay? So just lunge to one side and then shift the weight so that you're in a side lunge position on the other side. So your back is flat and the weight is in this heel. And then from here, you can just add a little punch, okay? And do that little oblique rotation that we were doing. And then just alternate sides. So now coming back to this side, lunge, lunge, and a little punch with an oblique twist, okay? Side to side lunge, twist, side to side lunge, twist. All right, it is not as challenging, but without any added weight, um, that will work. Final sandbag exercise is around the world. So I'm just going to start holding my sandbag in front of me, and then I'm going to lift the sandbag up behind my head, and then I'm gonna continue and return to my starting position. So then I'm gonna alternate sides, so then I'm gonna to go to the other direction. I'm going to swing the sandbag towards this side, lift it up behind my head, swing it down to the other side and return to the starting position. Okay, so it's going to look like this. So again, you can do that exercise with a kettlebell or a dumbbell or medicine ball or a household item. Anything that you can maintain a secure grip on and it is not too large to get it up and over your head and it's not too heavy for you, um, pretty much anything will work for that. If you don't have anything that's going to work for weight or you don't want to add weight to the exercise, again, it's a little bit difficult to give you an equipment free modification because other than lifting a weight up and over, I wasn't really doing anything else. So. Um, you can try something like this instead. See if these standing windmills work for you. So again, uh, hinging at the hips and pushing that booty back so the weight stays in your heels and keep the knees soft, okay? You can just bend over like this. Make sure your back is flat and the weight is in your heels. Start with both hands extended out to the side like this and then just twist so that one, the fingers of one hand are touching the ground and the fingers of the other hand are reaching up towards the ceiling. Okay, and then just rotate towards the other side. So switching the position of your hands. Now the other hand is touching ground and this hand is reaching up towards the ceiling. Okay, so it's actually still a great exercise. It's really not the same thing as around the world. But it's a great way to work your obliques, and I think it's a great alternative if you don't, uh, if you need an equipment-free option. I'm having the weirdest sensation right now. It's like, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like, like an out-of-body experience. For some reason, it feels like it's been so long since I made a workout video, or even did a workout, but it's been like two days. But I feel so weird, I feel so like out of my element right now. It's really weird, it's like a weird disconnect. I don't know how to describe it, but anyway. So we'll see <laughs> what effect that has on the workout, if any. It's also like really hot out here today. I have to get used to working out in the heat again. Oh wait, it's gonna be fun. Okay, so that's all the exercises. Um, as always, if anything is unclear with the format, how everything fits together, if you need any further help, with equipment free substitutions. If you need to see beginner modifications, remember that I am always here to help. It is very important to me that my workouts are always accessible to anyone and everyone who wants to do them with me, I'm always here to help facilitate that. Um, it is also equally important that you understand how to do each of these exercises with the correct form before you begin the workout so that you reduce your risk of injury and so that you're getting the maximum benefit out of each exercise. So if you have any doubt about how to do these exercises with the correct form, if you need any help with beginner modifications, please just ask, okay? Never hesitate to reach out if you have questions or if you need help. So um, my timer is set for 15 rounds of two minute intervals. So that's 30 minutes. We're going to start with sandbag swings and then we want to jump rope. So we'll be doing a total of eight sandbag exercises, although one of them is the same exercise just on the other side. And in between each of those, we will be doing jump rope for two minutes, okay? And remember, there's no designated rest interval, so you're going to move as quickly as you can from one exercise to the next, but go at your own pace. So if you need to rest, please rest. 
Do not push your body into doing something it's not ready to do and only continue when you feel that you are capable of continuing with the correct form. Never sacrifice your form for speed. Okay, so now you've seen all the exercises, go ahead and gather your equipment. So a sandbag or something similar if you have one. If not, maybe a kettlebell, medicine ball, uh, dumbbell or dumbbells, household items. If you're not adding weight, that's fine, but you do probably want to make sure that you grab an exercise mat or a yoga mat, something that you can lie down on and kneel down uncomfortably for those, um, the glute bridge raises and the uh, kneeling exercise. Grab your jump rope if you have a jump rope and you want to jump rope with me today. If you don't have a jump rope, remember that you can substitute with any other kind of cardio exercise while I'm jumping rope. Um, take a minute to make sure you're getting warmed up and when you're ready, let's get started. One more thing real quickly before we begin. I don't think I mentioned that if you want, you can do the sandbag swings or kettlebell swings holding on to your weight with both hands the whole time. You don't have to switch hands. So I'm going to be doing single arm sandbag swings, but you can hold on to your kettlebell or your sandbag or whatever you're using with both hands the whole time if that works better for you and just swing your kettlebell or your dumbbell or your sandbag like that, that's totally fine. Um, I was going to do it that way because I don't know if I can do single arm sandbag swings for two minutes, probably not. So if I'm gonna, but I wanted to go ahead and challenge myself. So I'm gonna do single, at, single hand, single arm sandbag swings. Why can't I say like words? I walk, I act like it's just today. I can never say words. I'm going to be doing single arm sandbag swings. No handbags involved. Um, so you do what works for you. If I need to pause and rest at some point during my work interval, then I'll pause and rest, okay? So just do your best. That is all you can do. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. So remember, there's no rest interval. I'm gonna start my timer. And as soon as the timer beeps, that is the start of our first two minute work interval. So we're going to get started right away with two minutes of sandbag swings. As soon as you're ready. One, two, three, here we go. right into jump rope.
no rest break. Obviously, it's going to take you a few seconds to get into position, but the point is just to move as quickly as you can to your glute bridge raises. trying to keep that time in between to less than 30 seconds. That's what I'm in, in, in. That's what I'm aiming to do. as quickly as you can. Down the mat. Stand back over one shoulder. Step that foot forward. Step it back. Other side.
we want to do is find or just kind of jog in place while you jump rope, but if you're more comfortable jumping with your feet together, jump with your feet together, whatever you want to do is fine. as you can make. Ugh. <sighs> 
rest but I try to do one more rep before taking my rest and I didn't have enough strength to maintain my balance so this exercise may not look tough but don't estimate, underestimate it okay do your best seconds left. Let's go for a few more reps. It took me a long time to start that interval so. I've never done that exercise before. soon. It's a killer. I really like it. I would love to get better at it. <laughs> okay, as soon as you can, jump rope. Tired. 
and you're getting fatigued like I am, you'll probably start to drip over your jump rope a little more. That's fine. Just do your best. Take a breath and get back into it as soon as you can. This exercise is also super tough. Not going to have time to fit in more than just a few reps, so let's get going. Do your best. I'm not happy with how much time I lost off of that work interval. It took me too long to get started and I was only able to complete a handful of reps. I would have liked to do a few more, but it's okay. Just do your best. Jump rope. to keep this transition time under 30 seconds. That's getting hard. So next is our overhead press with a leap twist, alternating side.
Don't rest if you don't need to. I just need a few seconds. All right, we're almost there. Keep pushing. I wish I would have had my timer where I could see it because I probably could have pushed through if I had known how little time there was left in the interval, but I tried to peek at it and I couldn't really see it. So by the time I put my sound bag down to check, I had lost too much time off of the work interval. It's like I needed a rest, but not if there was only 18 seconds left, you know? If I had known there was still a little time left, I could have pushed through. your best. That was 30 minutes. <laughs> I, do, I don't feel like it went by fast necessarily, but at the same time, I do. I like the format. I said this was my first time. I just wrote this this morning. I don't think I've ever done this format before. 30 minutes with no rest breaks is tough. 
because I really was trying to keep my breaks in between exercises as short as I could. The one thing I am really regretting is uh, making that one deadlift exercise like too many components because it just too, took too long to get through one rep and I was only able to complete like five or six reps during the work interval. So that's something I would change. But other than that, I really liked this workout. Um, it was super tough, but I enjoyed it. We're not quite finished yet. No workout of mine is ever complete until we have done our bonus burpee. So we have just one rep left to go. But first, it is time for the McFlurry Minute. So I'm going to reset my timer to count down 60 seconds for me. I'm going to complete as many revolutions with my jump rope as I can in 60 seconds. And if I make it through the entire 60 second work interval without tripping over my jump rope, everybody wins if we make flurry. So give me just a minute to reset my timer. I will be right back. All right, my timer is reset. I'm ready to go. I'm wearing pink, gray, and black today. So either jump rope would have matched with my outfit, but Rude Becca was calling to me today. So Rude Becca is up and it is up to this little fella to get me through this McFlurry minute without tripping over my jump rope. So wish us luck. I don't remember, I know I have a streak going, but like I said, it feels like forever since I've been out here doing this. I think, if I remember correctly, I believe we're going for five in a row today. So we'll see what happens. Like I said, it's kinda hot out here today and some ice cream would really hit the spot, but not as much as not having to pay for it. So I'm gonna do my best to get us all some free ice cream, but you guys, my legs are jelly. That workout was not very long, but there was no rest breaks and it was really tough. And um, it was a lot of jump rope. So I'm gonna do my best to keep the streak alive and to get us all some free ice cream. So wish me luck. Starting as always with a 10 second rest interval. And now, come on, Rebecca. 60 seconds. No tripping. Here we go. because during the McFlurry minute, I'm always counting in my head. And when my timer beeps, I'm always at right around rep 170 or so. So I usually keep going for an extra 30 reps just so that I'm doing an even 200 reps. But that time I tripped on rep like 180 something. It was like 188 or something like that. So I just picked up my count at 180 and did an extra 20 reps so that it would be even 200 reps. So that's what all that was about. But that last trip doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what happens during that 60 second work interval that is the McFlurry Minute. And during the McFlurry Minute, I did not trip over my jump rope. Rebecca came through for me, came through for all of us. We all get to eat ice cream for lunch. Very happy about that. Okay, 
ice cream and baseball and warm weather. You guys, summer is right around the corner and I sound excited about it, but I fucking hate summer. Those big nasty fig beetles out here harassing me during the workouts and crickets keeping me up at night. Oh my God. And the stifling heat, my God, the heat. Okay, well, at least I can enjoy the springtime for a few months, hopefully, before it gets too, too hot. But um, it's definitely hot enough today that ice cream is on the menu. So now you don't have to pay for it. You're welcome. All right, so now we have just one rep left to go. Let's do our bonus burpee together and then the workout will be officially complete. Here we go. Final rep of the day when you're ready. All right, with that, the workout is now officially complete. Um, a lot of new things that I tried today, I felt like some of them worked, some of them didn't, but overall, I thought this was a really great workout. I enjoyed it a lot. I hope you liked it too. Um, if you did this workout with me today, thank you so much. Please let me know what you thought of it and how you did. Thank you to everyone who's been working out with me lately. And even if you are not doing the workouts with me, thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for liking and sharing the videos. Thank you for all of your wonderful and supportive and engaging comments. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you to all of my new subscribers. If you are not subscribed already, please subscribe. And of course, a great big thank you to those of you who have been subscribed to my channel for years. Please know that I appreciate you all very much. One final reminder that if anything is unclear with the format, if you have questions about any of the specific exercises we were doing today, if you have any doubt at all about how to do these exercises with the correct form, if you need any further help with equipment-free modifications or beginner substitutions, please just ask. I am always happy to help with that. That is gonna do it for today, but before I say goodbye, I have to say one final thank you to those of you who have been watching the videos all the way until the end and commenting with the secret code phrase of the day. So before I say goodbye, I will give you today's secret code phrase of the day. It is, I didn't like that neither, nothing blowed up in it. So if you are still watching this video, hello, Thank you for watching all the way to the end. Please let me know that someone is still watching by going down to the comment section and leaving me a comment that says, I didn't like that neither. Nothing blowed up in it. That is going to do it for today and I will see you all next time. Bye.